Hey guys, Miss Marusik here, and in this video we're going to talk about buffer solutions, both how to recognize a buffer solution as well as how to write a reaction with one. To start us off here, a buffer is a solution that is designed to resist changes in pH if I add a small amount of acid or base to it. And the way that it works is that a buffer system happens to be an equilibrium system. And so when I add that acid or base to it, what will happen is that equilibrium will shift around to reduce that stress via Le Chatelier's principle, and so we'll minimize the amount of pH change that we'll see. It's not that we won't have any pH change at all, but it will definitely be reduced from what it could have been. Now, to give you an idea of why a buffer system is so important, uh, one of the best examples that we have of one is actually the bloodstream in our body. Our blood likes to maintain a pH of around 7.4, and if we do anything to get our pH off of that, our body can get really messed up. Uh, unfortunately, we eat and drink a lot of acidic things. Uh, for example, citric fruits, um, soda, all of those things are acidic. And so when we ingest that in and it gets absorbed into our bloodstream, uh, if we did not have the buffer system in place, what would happen is that our body would go into acidosis, our proteins would start to denature in our body, and we could die from that. So clearly it's really important to keep that pH in our bloodstream at 7.4. And the buffer system that's present is designed to do that for for us. Now, in order to recognize the presence of a buffer system, we're looking for two key combinations, either a weak acid with its conjugate base or a weak base with its conjugate acid. You notice we're always looking for either a weak acid or a weak base because we know that those weak substances end up creating equilibrium. So that's how we're going to get our equilibrium system. So it's really important that we recognize an acid as being strong or weak. So we've got to know that strong acid list like the back of our hand as well as the strong base list. Now on the other side of things with the conjugate pair, um, a lot of times that conjugate pair is hidden in an ionic salt, and it is assumed that that ionic salt would dissociate in order to give that ion partner that we're looking for. So usually we kind of have to watch out for something in our ionic compound that's in common with the weak acid or base, and that's how we know we have the conjugate pair being present. So with that said, let's look at some examples of some solution combinations and ask ourselves if we have buffer solutions or not present. So to start us off here, the first one is HNO3 with NH3. And the first thing I do is ask myself, well, what kind of substances do I have here? HNO3, I recognize that as being an acid because we have that hydrogen at the front of it. However, if I think about nitric acid, I know that that's on the strong acid list. So off the bat, if I have a strong acid, this can't be a buffer system because this is not going to make equilibrium. So even though NH3 ammonia is a weak base, this is not going to be a buffer system because I don't have a weak base with its conjugate or a weak acid with its conjugate. I don't have that right combination present. All right, let's look at the next one, NH3 with NH4Cl. Well, we just said that NH3 ammonia is a weak base. That's one of our nitrogen amine bases. And so what that means is that I would be looking for its conjugate pair. Well, let's see here. NH4Cl is an ionic compound that will dissociate. Well, think about what it's going to break up into. It's going to break up into chloride negative one ions, but also into those NH4 plus one ions, those ammonium ions. And that ammonium ion is the conjugate pair to NH3. So therefore, I do have a weak base with its conjugate acid. And so therefore, I do have a buffer system. Now, I went ahead and also wrote the reaction showing the equilibrium of the buffer system. 
I would be going back and forth between the weak base and its conjugate acid. However, this is going to be occurring in a water solution. So I needed to ask myself, well, where does the water need to go? Well, in order for the NH3 to gain an H plus to become the ammonium ion, I had to put the water on this reactant side. And so that would end up creating hydroxide ion, which makes sense because this was a weak base buffer system. All right. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a moment and pause the video and see if you can try out the next three examples, predicting if you feel like they're a buffer solution or not. So go ahead, pause it, and go try it out. All right, did you pause it? Did you try them out? Okay, let's go through each of these real quickly and see how we did. So on this next one here, I notice I have HBr with NaBr. And I'm like, ooh, they both have bromide in common. So that's good. That might mean I have that conjugate partner there. However, hydrogen bromide is a strong acid. And so therefore, even though this is an acid with its conjugate base, that acid being strong means that this is not a buffer solution. So again, you can see how important it is that you know your strong acid and base list. All right, the next one, hydrofluoric with sodium fluoride. I'm like, well, hydrofluoric, that's an acid. If I look at this other thing here, I notice this is an ionic compound where I see that fluoride ion in there. Sodium fluoride would break apart into sodium ions and fluoride ions. So I have that conjugate pair there. And so therefore, this would be a buffer solution between a weak acid and a conjugate base. And again, I went ahead and wrote the reaction here. So the HF would go back and forth between the fluoride ion. I know this is going to be occurring in water, so I want to think about well, where's the best place to put this water. And again, I'm going to put it on this reactant side here because I need that water to accept that H+. Plus to become hydronium. It would make sense for a weak acid solution to end up making hydronium somewhere in the reaction. All right, the last one here, HCl with NaOH, I'm like, Ooh, well, HCl, that's an acid, but there's two problems. Not only do I not see chloride ion in this other partner here, but HCl, hydrochloric, that's a strong acid. Not only that, sodium hydroxide, is a strong base. So that is definitely a no on being a buffer system. All right, so now let's say we have one of these buffer systems, either a weak base conjugate acid buffer or a weak acid conjugate base buffer. What if I add some acid or base to that? What would end up happening? And this is one of the things that we're often asked to do. We are asked to write a reaction that would occur at this equilibrium in order to shift this around. So let's talk about our first combination here. It says, what if we add a strong acid to a weak acidic buffer equilibrium system? Now to do this, I'm gonna actually utilize my weak acid buffer system from up here um, in order to write this reaction as an example. So we are going to use the HF fluoride ion combination here, reminding ourselves that HF is our weak acid and that fluoride ion is our conjugate base. And what we're going to do is we are going to add a strong acid to it. Now it doesn't have to be strong. You could add a weak acid to this, but in any case, think about what ion an acid would create that could disrupt the system. It would make H plus, right? So now let's think about this for a minute. If I have H plus from an acid, do you think an acid would react with another acid or would an acid react with a base? And I would hope that we recognize that an acid should react with a base. And so what would happen here is that our hydrogen ion would react with our fluoride ion. Now, when it does so, what does it create? Well, that creates hydrogen fluoride, right? So here's what I want us to think about. What would this reaction process do 
to this equilibrium up here. Well, think about what's happening. I am adding in hydrogen ion, but that's going to end up forcing the creation of hydrogen fluoride. I'm going to use some of that hydrogen up. Now, I know I don't see hydrogen ion up here, but remember, what's the same thing as hydrogen ion? Well, that would be this H3O plus, right? That hydronium. So in creating that HF and using up the H3O plus, I'm forcing us to go back in this opposite direction here. So again, let me walk you through this one more time. I'm adding in an acid, which adds in additional H3O plus. When that happens, it reacts with the fluoride ion to end up creating HF. Now, even though my pH would reduce somewhat because I added an acid, it shouldn't reduce as much as I would have expected it to. Why? Well, because originally I thought I added in a whole bunch of hydronium, a whole bunch of hydrogen, which would really reduce the pH. But if I'm going to take some of that and change it back to HF, then that pH is not going to change quite as much as I anticipated. And that is the whole goal of a buffer. It's saying, hey, I'm adding in this, but I'm going to shift back this other way. And so that way I am reducing the effect of adding that acid in. All right, let's talk about adding another combination. What if we add a strong acid to a weak basic buffer equilibrium system? Now, to talk about this, I'm going to again use the weak basic buffer that we saw up above. Up above, we utilized NH3 as our weak base along with ammonium as our conjugate acid. So I'm going to use that same combination again. If I'm adding in an acid, then that means I'm going to add in H plus into this. So now let's think about this for a minute. Our H plus, what would it react with? Would an acid react with a base or would an acid react with an acid? Again, hopefully we recognize that an acid adding it in should react with our base. So therefore, this hydrogen is going to interact with the NH3. Well, what would that make? Well, that's going to make ammonium ion, right? Okay, so now let's think about this in the context of our equilibrium system. If I'm adding in acid and I'm shifting this toward NH4+, okay? Adding in an acid should have reduced the pH. It would become more acidic. But when I add in that H plus and it reacts with NH3, we're going to end up shifting toward this NH4 plus and the OH, right? We're going to end up creating more of that NH4 plus. Now, the OH I create, what that what is that going to do? Well, that's going to cancel out some of that H plus I've added in neutralizing it out and so now I'm canceling out some of the effect of adding in that acid. So would the pH drop? Yes, but not as much as I would expect it to. All right, let's go ahead and flip the page and talk about two other combinations. All right, what if we add a strong base to a weak acidic buffer? So again, we're going to use our weak acidic buffer example from the previous page to write ourselves a sample equation here. So we're going to use our hydrofluoric acid along with our fluoride ion. Again, the hydrofluoric is our weak acid. The fluoride ion is our conjugate base. But this time we're going to add in a strong base. Uh, some group one or two hydroxide, except BENMG. So maybe sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. So think about what we're really adding in, though, when we add in that base. We're really adding in hydroxide ion, right? Because that strong base should dissociate, and whatever cation it was with would be a spectator ion. So now, if I have this hydroxide base, would the base want to react with a acid or with another base? 
Well, again, just like the previous page, hopefully we recognize that hydroxide, a base, would want to interact with our acid. So now we want to think about, well, what would that make? Well, an acid loses an H+. Plus. So that H plus is going to get donated to the hydroxide. So that's going to leave behind our fluoride ion and end up creating H2O. So again, thinking those equilibrium systems on the previous page, this reaction would end up shifting that equilibrium around. And so even though I'm adding a basin, which should raise the pH, I'm not going to raise it as much as I would have expected because that equilibrium is going to shift around due to this reaction occurring. All right, we've got one last one here, adding a strong base to a weak basic buffer. So I'm going to use our weak basic buffer from the previous page, our NH3 along with our NH4+. Plus. The ammonia was our weak base. The ammonium ion was our conjugate acid. So again, I'm adding in a strong base. I'm adding in hydroxide. What would that base interact with? That base would interact with our acid. So the OH and the ammonium ion would react together. Let's think about what they would make. Our Acid always donates a proton, and so when it donates that H plus to the OH, it ends up leaving behind NH3 and ends up creating water. So yet again, this reaction would then cause my equilibrium to shift around. Even though I'm adding a strong base, which should raise the pH, closer to 14, I'm not going to raise it quite as much as I would have expected because this reaction here is going to shift that equilibrium around that we wrote on the previous page. Now, before we end this video, I want to talk about the several things you might be asked to do with a buffer system. First, you might be asked to identify if a buffer solution is present, which is what we did on the first page. Next, you might be asked to calculate the current pH of a buffer solution. That's something that we're going to do in our next video. Given the correct molarities, volumes, I could actually calculate what pH is my buffer system currently at. And then finally, you could be asked to write the reaction that would occur if a strong acid or base were added to the buffer solution, which is what we did up here. Now, what you would not be asked to do is if I added this base in or if I added an acid in to calculate the new pH after we've added it in. So don't panic. You're not, not going to be asked to calculate that, but you might be asked to predict if it's higher or lower than the original. Obviously, it should be really close to the original. That's the whole point of doing these buffer solutions. But we might want to say, is it slightly higher or slightly lower than where we started? All right, I hope we're feeling good about recognizing buffer solutions and writing reactions involving buffers. If you have any questions or need any help, please feel free to email me. Bye, guys.